today's life lesson is entitled Your Most Important Relationship. And I will be reading from John chapter 15, verses 4 and 6, John 17, 20 through 22, Proverbs 18, verse 24, and John 15, verses 13 and 15. Uh, when I study, I do write notes, so from time to time, you might see me looking down to reference the notes because I want to make sure that what was given to me, I am accurately giving it to you because it was most, it is and was, it was and is most beneficial to me in my growth. I just don't hear the word, read the word. But I apply the word in my life. I allow the word to read me and not just read the word. John 15 verses 4 through 6. Abide in me and I in you. And this is the New American Standard Bible. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine, so neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him, he bears much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. If anyone does not abide in me, he is thrown away as a branch and dries up and they gather them and cast them into the fire and they are burned. John 17, 20 to 22, New American Standard Bible. I do not ask on behalf of these alone, but for those also who believe in me through their word that they may all be one. Even as you, Father, are in me and I in you, that they also may be in us, so that the world may believe that you sent me. Proverbs 18.24 of the NIV. One who has unreliable friends soon comes to ruin, but there is a friend who sticks closer than a brother. John 15.13-15, New American Standard Bible. Greater love has no one than this, that one lay down his life for his friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. No longer do I call you slaves, for the slaves does not know, for the slave does not know what his master is doing. But I have called you friends for all things that I have heard from my father, I have made known to you the reading of the word of God. Your most important relationship. I know that maybe these scriptures, you have never related them to or correlated them to a relationship. And the relationship that Yahweh Elohim through his son Yeshua Jesus wants with us. But I assure you, they are relational. In fact, we all have individuals right now in our lives that occupy positions that are relational in our lives, meaning we have relationships with family members, friends, co-workers, employers, employees, doctors, lawyers, accountants, and each position serves a specific purpose in our lives. What I want to relate to you during this life lessons is that the one relationship that governs all is the most important relationship because it influences how you see or perceive or deal with or manage all the other relationships and what you allow. Jesus in John 15 verse 4 and 6 used the word abide. What, what does that mean? So the greek word there mino means to stay abide or remain it also means living other words to wait for or wait to accept without obligation to remain stable or fixed in a state to continue in a place to live in me the amplified classical version says so jesus is telling you to continue to live in me and I in you because apart from me to disconnect from the life source 
you will not be able to do anything. You will not have to manage. And all the other things in your life will become dysfunctional. God is a God of order. He does things in decency and in order. He, when he saw everything that was darkened and chaotic, he came to put order to it. And so that's what the relationship, the most important relationship, the relationship that governs everything in your life does. Everything from this most important influential relationship governs everything else. Let me slow down and digress. When I was in going through a new membership, new membership class uh, in this particular church that I uh, joined, we were given a paper with a diagram, and the diagram was a circle, and within the circle was a throne that was in the center, and then outside the circle we had these letters, uh, uh, words of of things that we could put on the throne, and whatever you choose to put on your throne or whatever that was the the defining focal point of you as the individual was sat on the throne so you can have god on the throne you can have man on the throne you can have career on the throne you can have finances on the throne but whatever you had on that throne is what influenced all the other relationships and the order or pattern or function or dysfunction of your life. And and this is the thing. Many relationships that we have, we have to understand there are some relationships that was divinely ordained. Um, Your parents, you didn't get to choose your parents. I didn't get to choose my parents. But God told Jeremiah in Jeremiah chapter 1, before you were formed in your mother's womb, I knew you. Meaning... I chose the vessel for which to bring you through and birth you into this existence for the specific purpose that I ordained for you. We had no say so of who our parents would be, but this relationship was divinely ordained by God. And because of this relationship, it was tailored towards something in regards to God's purpose for sending us here in this realm. So the choices that we choose, the relationship we choose, we can choose right or we can choose wrong based on who's on the throne. And if we're on the throne, then the throne, our perspective, our choices are limited by our perspective, by limited by our knowledge or lack thereof, limited by our lack of discernment. And so we put people in positions that they were never intended to occupy because based on our emotions, our feelings, and our preferences instead of the purpose of God. But if God is not on the throne to influence and manage our choices, then many of us fall short in choosing the right candidate or the best candidate for the position. I believe the position of husband and wife, a husband and a wife is not just a person that that's the position and the person who occupies the position of husband and wife has to be equipped to handle the responsibilities of that position. And if we choose wrong, then we have dysfunctionality in our lives. But if we choose according to the will of the purpose and the plans of God, then we realize that you and the person you married to has been given the grace of God to handle you and everything that will happen in your life, everything that will transpire, everything that you will encounter in your life, God has given you and that individual, your husband, your wife, the grace to handle that position. But when we choose wrong, we find people at the the first sign of trouble, they want to run away. They want to neglect and reject and abandon the vows. And uh, of course, then you lie before God. But that's not what we're talking about today. Relationships. 
Relationships are very important to the health of our lives. And especially those who are, are dead bent or are focused on the purpose of God. We got to make sure that individuals relationships and individuals who are in the position of relationships in our lives, be it husband, friend, whatever, are the people who were intended for the relationship. And if you find that certain people that you have placed in the relation, in the relational position of friend are are not equipped, not ordained by God to handle, not just for your today, but your tomorrow as well, then God has a way of adjusting. When you put him on the throne, he has a way of pruning and a purging the dead branches from our lives. The, 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 the things, the relationships that are not bringing us life, those, those relationships that are not nourishing and tailored to a purpose. He has a way of pruning. That's why when you give the throne to the one in whom it was intended in the first place, he starts to do a little assessment of your life and starts to remove the things, the dead things, the dead weight, the drying up, the withering things of your life that will only cause you harm rather than good. And so that's why he told you to to, uh, walk away from that friendship. That's why he told you to walk away from that job or Oh, or that's where he, he took the desire away from you from them drugs or alcohol because they were dead and it was killing you and you didn't even know it. So when God, the, your most important relationship, if you have not figured it out right now, before now is your relationship with Yahweh Elohim, the Lord God through his son, Yeshua Hamashiach. And that relationship governs and influences all other relationships. Remember the song, the things I used to do, I don't do no more. The places I used to go, I don't go no more. Ever since you came along, you gave my heart a brand new song. So that's what God do. He starts to clean up the dysfunction in your life and start to put things in order people in the positions that they are ordained to be placed in to make them functional. And you no longer accept the dysfunction of a friendship. You no longer accept the dysfunction of a marriage because you understand that God is a God that works in functionality and in decency and in order. So you no longer conform or just settle for less When you know that God, the one who sits on the throne is eternal and he knows what's best because he's omnipotent and omniscient. He knows what's best and he has the power to put in order the relationships in our lives. Jesus said, abide in me and I in you live in me, have your resonance in me, continue in me and allow me to be your life source in which the flow, the flow of everything happens from the throne. And this is the thing to have that revelational knowledge of God. It's not some casual thing, just like with any relationship you had in your life. It took work. It took time. It took cultivation. It took building up. It took getting to know one another. And I don't know why we think is any different with Yahweh Elohim through his son, Yeshua. It takes time. It takes time to get into his word. It takes time to pray. It takes time to listen to him. It takes time to listen to the Holy Spirit and to obey him and just do what he says. It takes that cultivation, that fostering, that building up of a relationship. And here's the caveat, because many people don't understand that, uh, when we put people on the throne that was meant for the eternal Ecclesiastes 311 on the NIV reads, 
He has made everything beautiful in its time. He has also set eternity in the human heart. Yet no one can fathom what God has done from the beginning to the end. The eternity that is in a man's heart can only be filled by the eternal God. So the caveat here is that no individual is equipped to sit on the throne. They, and even yourself cannot handle the weight that accompanies it because the throne was specifically designed and created for the eternal God, for Yahweh Elohim, the Lord God. So whenever we put anything or anyone on the throne outside of besides Yahweh Elohim, we get dysfunction. We get dysfunctional relationship. We get a perverse perspective of things and happenings and circumstances and events because the one who knows all the eternal one is not on the throne to clear up and give you the right perspective regarding the things and the happenings in your life. Therefore, because of what flows from the throne, Proverbs, which is your heart, it is the center, the governance of your life. From out of your heart flows the issues of life, Proverbs 4.23 says. So understanding that, we understand that it's important to have the right one on the throne because it governs everything else, your belief system, your mindset, your perspective, your, and even it governs your emotions because we're emotional beings. A lot of us allow our emotions to decide. So when we put our emotions on a throne, we know we fickle. We're not, we're unstable because when you make decisions based on emotions, you always make or choose wrong. If I choose based on preference, because we will put preference on the throne. And if I choose based on my preference, I will miss the purpose of God because God's purpose don't always fall in line with our preference. The package is not always, does not always come the way we desire, but we got to understand that we got to understand and know and be able to discern God's purpose versus our preference. We have missed out on a lot of God ordained things because it did not come the way we wanted it to come. It didn't look like how we wanted it to look like. Let me say that again. We have missed out on a lot of God divinely ordained things and people because it didn't, she didn't, he didn't look the way I prefer. I just had to take a moment there because that's so true. Because we have put our preferences on the throne instead of letting the eternal occupy the eternity because eternity can only be occupied by the eternal, not the limited, not the mortal, not those that our lives is but a miss. Here's a day and gone tomorrow who don't even know what tomorrow will hold, but the one who knows what tomorrow holds, we push aside because we want to put our preferences, our emotions, our selfish ambitions, our career goals, and so forth and so on. Our pleasure on the throne instead of the one in whom the throne is intended, was intended for. Yes. Yes. I know. Hard pill to swallow. Without a word to read you relationships, every relationship you and I have or had or will have is directly affected by the influence of what we place on the throne of our lives, of our heart. That being said, God through Yeshua wants a relationship. And that's why Five times 
in verses John 15, 4 through 6, 3 in verse 4, 1 in verse 5, and 1 in verse 6, he said, Abide in me. But because apart from me, you can do nothing. He's inviting you to a relationship with him and understanding without the relationship with me, Jesus is saying, everything else you do has no eternal benefit or significance. As a blood by born again, redeemed child of God, we are citizens of the kingdom of heaven and that's an eternal kingdom. And what we do now, is based on this perspective. Is it beneficial for the kingdom of God or is it just beneficial for my life today, which will be here and gone just like that? As for me, I want to do things that are beneficial for the kingdom, for eternity, not just for a brief moment, just a speck on the timeline of humanity. Jesus is saying, abide in me and I in you. That's relational. He wants a relationship with you. And this relationship will govern and influence and put in order all other relationships in your lives. Therefore, it, it, it is. This is the most important relationship. John 17, 20 through 22 Jesus is saying, I do not ask on behalf of these alone, talking about the apostle doing his, his priestly prayer. But for those who believe in me through their word, their word, that is basically my word, because they're going to speak what I tell them to speak, that they may all be one. There you go. This unity, this oneness, this relationship with Yahweh Elohim and his son, Yeshua, Jesus. In Proverbs 18, 24, one who has unreliable friends, and that's what we find ourselves choosing when we don't have the one enthroned who is the friend of friends to govern and help us in choosing friendships that are reliable. We often choose unreliable friendships and one who has unreliable friends soon comes to ruin. But there is a friend who sticks closer than a brother. There is someone who will stick closer to you than your own family member. And his name is Yeshua. Because he says in John 15, 13 to 15, greater love has no one than this, that one lay down his life for his friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. No longer do I call you slaves, for it, the slave does not know what his master is doing. But I have called you friends for all things that I have heard from my father I have made known to you. I have called you friend. And friendships take time to develop, to incur trust in the relationship. Friendships. Take time to be able to experience the reliability of an individual or unreliability. But it takes time. And Jesus right here is saying that I love you so much that I am going to demonstrate my love for you. And the Bible said he demonstrated his love for us in that Christ died. The love that the Father has for us was demonstrated almost 2,000 years ago on a hill called Golgotha, on Calvary's cross. That legal and binding transaction that transpired on the cross that was ratified by the blood of Yeshua HaMashiach. He shed his blood to prove his love for us. He is the ultimate friend. And therefore, having the ultimate friend on the throne what will influence us and help God in governing our choices in friendship. Mm. Lord, help me. So when I talk about God pruning and purging certain things from my life, when we finally put him on the throne, 
that we friendships that we've had since elementary, since junior high and high school, we start to see God starts to reveal the relevance of the friendship. It starts to show you that this friendship does not have to do, have anything to do with the purpose for which I called you. I birthed you into this assist, existence for, into this realm for. Because you were not some accident. You were not some happenstance. You didn't just happen. I designed you for a purpose in this realm. And all the positions in your life should have and be connected with that purpose. And if they are not, then you have to make the decision whether I want to drag along dead branches that are withered up, dead things, dead people that have no eternal significance regarding your purpose, the purpose God have for your life, or whether I'm just going to walk away. It might sting and hurt, but God is the God of comfort. And this is the thing. No one who loses anything in God, no one loses anything in God, God always places his ordained individuals in your life, but you got to be careful because there is an enemy of our souls who wants to kill, steal, and destroy and distract. And just as God will send you someone for purpose, the enemy will send you someone to distract you and divert you from that purpose. That's why we have to abide, live in Christ, being led by his Holy Spirit to be able to discern and ask the question, who sent you and why are you here? Because if you ask those questions, then you will get the, the uh, idea of, okay, this is purpose led or no, this is just distraction. And you'll be able to move it on out the way or pursue it as God intends you, intends of you. So guard that which God's entrusted from, for you. For from the throne of your heart flows everything you do. And what influences the flow from the your heart, the, the throne of your heart is what is occupying the throne. Remember, the throne is intended for the internal God. Only the internal God can fill the throne. But the one thing I've learned about Yahweh Elohim, my father, is that he does not force himself on the throne of your life, of your heart, even though the throne was created for him. And we find ourselves putting those things that was never created and the throne, we find them lacking always. But Yahweh Elohim is the one, only one who is able to fill up that throne. And from him flows all the things that he intends for the purpose for he, which he created you. So we must, therefore, we must learn to abide and remain and stay fixed in Yeshua HaMashiach. We must learn to cultivate our most important relationship. This must take prevalence in our lives more than any other relationship. Because without this relationship, all the other relationships in our lives will be dysfunctional. And then we will settle, conform, and compromise just to have those relationships in our lives. And we will miss the mark tremendously because God has a purpose for everything in your life. Nothing just happens in God. And when you are blood bought, born again, when you are saved and you come into knowing God as Savior, but most important, knowing Jesus as Lord of your life, he becomes the governor and influencer and master of your life. Therefore, what is pleasing and acceptable to him is what you do and allow. And what is displeasing or unacceptable, you reject and push out of your life. And it's all about living from that relational point, that perspective of God being head of my life. You hear so many people saying, I want to thank Jesus 
for being the head of my life, who is the head of my life, but Jesus ain't the head of your life. We can see that by what's occurring in your life. We can see that by the fruit of your life. We can see that by the disorder and the chaos in your life. Jesus is not the head of your life. Jesus is not the master and influencer of your life. Because when Jesus become the master and influencer of your life, yes, he does a little construction work and remodeling. And in the beginning, it seems a little chaotic, but there's order to it. There's reasoning behind it. There's purpose behind it. And sooner or later, you start to see the pieces put in its proper place. You start to see the mess being swept away and you start to see it become cleaned out and everything is placed in its order and it is functioning the way God intends it to function. So when Jesus is really the head Lord and head of your life, then all your relationships will reflect that. The reason why. It doesn't because he's really not the head of your life. Hindsight is 2020. And in 2020, we have had a lot of time to reflect over the happenings and circumstances in our lives. And many people have found their lives disrupted and the dysfunction of their lives screaming loudly Because when you were able to preoccupy yourself with things, you weren't able to see and recognize the dysfunction. But since the Lord God has slowed a lot of us down, we start to see the dysfunction in our lives. And then we start to realize Jesus ain't really Lord. I've been Lord. I've been managing things. I've been influencing things. I've been choosing based on my preferences and my emotions. And then we start to have to go through the processing and the sanctification process of really allowing him to get on the throne. Cause you know, when he gets on the throne, he's not going to allow the mess to stay. And some of us have been come, become comfortable in our mess. And now God is You want to put Jesus on the throne and now Jesus is coming to disrupt your mess. And some of y'all are uncomfortable, but that's okay. And do the process because the end result is glorious. And so the throne, the one who occupies the throne, the Lord Jesus, he helps me to make right decisions not based on momentary preferences because I've grown and some things that I prefer in my twenties, I don't prefer today. Some things that I liked to do back then, I don't like to do today. Some places that I used to like to go to yesterday, I don't like to go today. Because of the Lord Jesus who sits on the throne. And he is now teaching me and showing me how to make decisions. Not based on momentary preferences. But based on purpose. His purpose for my life. We don't know how much time we have remaining. Time is a commodity, a resource that we never get back. And so my prayer is always teach me to number my days. And in these remaining days, I want to be busy about the father's business, just as Yeshua Jesus was and is still today. I want to occupy, really occupy until he comes. And that occupation is busy doing the will, the purpose, the agenda, the goals and objective of the king and his kingdom here on earth in this realm. So in conclusion, we can waste our time chasing after people and things that have no eternal benefit or significance, or we can surrender the throne to whom the throne was intended in the first place. Yahweh Elohim. 
And we could develop and cultivate a relationship with him through his son, Yeshua Hamashiach. Because no one comes to the Father except through me, Jesus says in John 14, 6. And understanding that everything that is done and that we do in our lives reflects who occupies the throne of influence in our lives. It is important for us as believers in Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus the Messiah, that we submit and surrender to his lordship for real. And really ask the question when we're making choices, when we're developing partnerships and friendships, businesses, personal, per business or personal, is this pleasing and acceptable to God? Is this what God intends for my life? Is this God's best for me? Allow his influence to influence your decisions, your choices, your agendas, your goals, your objectives. Because many of us take on causes that God never intended for us to take on in the first place. It's a distraction. Everything good is not God. So we got to learn how to discern. And the only way we're going to learn how to discern God is through his spirit. We need his spirit. In fact, in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 11 on the New American Standard Bible, it says, For who among men knows the thoughts of man except the spirit of a man, of the man, which is in him? Even so, the thoughts of God, no one knows except the spirit of God. Without God's spirit in us, teaching, leading, and guiding us in the ways of God, in the will of God. We will never know God or develop our most important relationship with him without his Holy Spirit leading and guiding us. And we submitting to the, the leading and guiding in the teachings of the Holy Spirit. We will not know God. And so we will get an erroneous perspective of God. We will get a misinterpretation of who God is, what he's like, and what he requires. Because we will always base it on what's on the throne of our lives. And if our preference is on the throne of our lives, forget about it. We will misinterpret God to fit and be into our preferences. And that's not God. So in conclusion, your most important relationship, the one that should be the focal point in your lives, the one that, that should be governing all the other relationships. And get, get this, when you develop and cultivate your relationship with Yahweh Elohim, it benefits all the other relationships in your life. It benefits your marriage. It benefits your relationship with your children. It benefits your relationship with your parents and your other family members. It benefits it. So why not focus on and develop your most important relationship ever? That with Yahweh Elohim. I thank you for listening and watching. I pray that the word becomes active in your life and you not just be a hearer of the word, but you do what the word says. In Jesus' name, amen. This is a life lesson. No matter what you gotta keep pushing. Every day is a blessing. A life lesson. This is a life lesson No matter what you gotta keep pushing Every day is a blessing A life lesson